I'm Ollie Davis, this is the Wrestle Talk News. And our top story today is an AEW star is now gone from the company. And no, not the one you're probably thinking of. According to AEW's own website, Sonny Kiss is no longer listed on their official roster page. Neither AEW or Sonny have commented on the potential departure. Sonny has been with the promotion since their very first pay-per-view Double or Nothing over four years ago in 2019. Initially featured on TV against the likes of Cody Rhodes and Kenny Omega, Kiss's dynamite presence reduced significantly after 2020, having a long-running feud with former partner Joey Janela entirely on dark. Sonny returned to TV after a two-year hiatus last August, losing to Parker Bordeaux on an episode of Rampage, prompting Kiss to turn heel and join the Trustbusters. Sonny made several appearances on AEW Dark at the beginning of this year before moving over to ROH TV, most recently wrestling back in July. AEW first tweeted Sonny is All Elite on the 8th of February 2019, four and a half years ago, or in pandemic terms, 108 years ago. It's currently unknown whether this was a release or a contract expiry. Sonny has been announced for the All Out Adjacent Starcast 6 convention for this weekend, so we'll likely learn more then. Oh, wow. something, something, I don't know, something just feels weird. It feels, it doesn't feel right. It's, um, we haven't talked about CM Punk for a whole minute. Let's, let's change that right now. The Wrestling Observer Newsletter is reporting a new version of the backstage scuffle between CM Punk and Jack Perry from last weekend's All In from a so-called Neutral Source. Neutral Source, new name of your favorite indie wrestler's finishing move. According to Neutral Source, it was Punk who approached Perry backstage to go nose to nose with him aggressively. Perry said his on-air real glass comments was just to get heel heat, to which Punk reacted by shoving, punching, and choking him all in front of AEW president Tony Khan. Once things were broken up, Punk allegedly lunged at Khan, saying he's quitting the company. I mean, I don't know what sort of lunge they're talking about there. I can only, I can only imagine this one. Lunge. I'm quitting the company, Tony. Samoa Joe then calmed the situation down for his and Punk's opening match to go ahead. It's a regrettable controversy hanging over one of the crowning achievements in AEW's existence, especially with the Wrestling Observer reporting the all-in pay-per-view buy estimates are between 168 and 184,000. This would make it the biggest since last year's Double or Nothing. And when you add in the record-breaking 81,000 attendance number, surely it's the most watched pay-per-view AEW have ever done. They just need to get their head down and do what they're best at, putting on great in-ring wrestling and promos, and they've announced Dennis Robin for Collision. These are the wrong things to be taking from WCW, Tony! John Cena's return to WWE on the 1st of September episode of SmackDown should prove a much bigger ratings draw. His appearance on the final episode of 2022 received monster viewership. But the real reason he returned might not just be because WWE is now, then, together, forever, and he wants to say thank you to all us fans. It's because there's an actor's strike on right now and he's a bit bored. According to Fightful Select, many backstage in the company have heard WWE was able to bring in Cena for an extended run, which began on last night's SmackDown, or see him hosting the Payback pay-per-view, feature on India's Superstar Spectacle, and reportedly even appear at October's Fastlane show because of his open availability due to the actor's strike in Hollywood. Yes, wrestlers being too self-absorbed to have a union. As to what that fast lane appearance could be, worked wrestling claims, John Cena vs Cody Rhodes has been discussed as a possibility during Cena's return stint. The two had previously interacted back on the 6th of March episode of Raw, where Cody told Cena off mic he wants to work with him. Maybe we could see an interaction between them on Cody's Grayson Waller effect segment on tonight's Payback. But what else happened on the SmackDown build? Hot tag to Tempest. After doing Rampage, of course. This is Rampage, baby. Sat, start the clock. Sat? Okay, no clock, but let's go. We open with the Tag Battle Royal to earn an ROH Tag Title Shot at All Out. And yes, if you read the spoilers, you already know the Dark Order won this one. Silver and Reynolds versus MJF in a pay-per-view match in 2023. Didn't have that on my bingo card. Ozzy Open brawled with Jericho and Sammy Guevara on the stage after the match. And then we had Nick Wayne and Aljo Del Vikingo versus Kip Sabian and Gringo Loco. Gringo Loco on Rampage, baby. Let's 
fucking go. This was a very fun back and forth tag match with Vikingo and Gringo going crazy as you would expect them to before Vikingo hit him with a 630 senton for the win, fucking stuck him too. And I did not think that their names rhymed when I wrote this. Hangman Page then took on motherfucking Brian Keith in some cowboy on cowboy violence. Brian Keith on Rampage, let's go. Support indie wrestling folks and support Brian Keith. Dude is fantastic, even if his pants go all the way, almost, almost all the way up to his nipples. Hangman won with the back, the buck shot lariat. Blah, 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 porky pig. Rene Paquette asked 2.0 and Daniel Garcia about challenging for the trio's title on Collision, and Garcia danced in her face. Rene asked Roddy Strong about why he did what he did at Wembley, and he left with the kingdom. Then we had our main, then we had our main event as Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale beat Taya Valkyrie and Anna Jay as Jay accidentally super kicked Taya, allowing Sky Blue to hit the code blue on Anna for the win. Time. I, I don't know if there's time, but I'm gonna assume I did it. Let's go, baby. Let's. It's not the same without Sat. This is Super Cena SmackDown, baby. We open our show with the returning John Felix, Anthony Cena Jr., who says hi to Stu the cameraman and cuts a promo about thanking the WWE fans for letting him return, letting him stay for the next two months, allowing him to wrestle in India for the first time ever, and giving him the chance to host Payback. He gets cut off by the new music of Jimmy Uso, who comes out and says this is his ring now. Jimmy says Cena and Roman are just alike because they only take and they never give back, and Cena tells Jimmy that he's waited three years to tell him him, they, the wrong Uso quit before giving him an AA. I don't know how that makes sense, but I'll roll with it. Kayla Braxton asked Austin Theory and Grayson Waller about John Cena hosting Payback before they both talk about what they're gonna do on the show instead. Jimmy Uso is walking backstage as a tech op almost pushes a crate onto him. That, that's the whole segment, and it's one of the weirdest segments I've had to recap in these reviews. We then had our opening tag match as Theory and Waller beat Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar. This was a fine opener, with Mysterio in particular looking great as always, before Theory attacked Escobar's injured knee as he and Ray spilled to the outside, allowing Waller to hit his rolling stunner to pick up the win in his first win of his main roster career. I mean, better late than never, but damn bro, kept us waiting. Meechin is backstage talking with Adam Pierce, and Jimmy Uso barges in and cuts her off, and Pierce tells him to stop being rude to everyone. Tell those heels to stop being mean. Meechin is then shown talking with the OC about how rude Jimmy was, and AJ Styles asked what's up, and he went off to deal with the situation. Bobby Lashley explain the relationship between himself and the Street Profits is simply real recognize real. The Street Profits come out looking fresh as hell and thank Lashley as Lashley says they are putting the whole WWE on notice because they're coming for power and championship gold. Lashley and Street Profits for trios champs, baby. Oh wait. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens come out for their match and have a tense stare down with the Profits as KO and Sami then squashed Joaquin Wilde and Cruz Del Toro of the LWO. This was a really short match before KO hit a pop-up powerbomb, Sami hit a haluva kick, and KO hit the stunner for the win. After the match, Sami says in a promo that at Payback, the Judgment Day are in for the fight of their lives. Short and effective, I suppose, but definitely short but also effective. Backstage, AJ confronts Jimmy Uso, who asks AJ what he's gonna do about it. AJ shoves Jimmy and is immediately jumped by Solo Sokoa, who tells Jimmy he's not out of the bloodline until they say so. Jimmy says Solo, Roman, and Paul can't tell him what to do and then leaves. AJ Styles then says he's gonna remind the bloodline that this is the house that AJ Styles built. The Miz comes out to have a promo duel with LA Knight, yeah. Oh. And much like the rest of the work these two have done together, this is quite good. They talk about the success of the other and how the other isn't on their level. I won't do justice to the delivery of these promos, but it was very good, culminating in Miz hitting a skull crushing finale and Knight running up the ramp to hit Miz to stand tall to end the segment. Shotzi then beat Bailey in a match I had a lot of problems with. Things weren't terribly heated and my God, did the commentary team want nothing to do with actually talking about this match. Just bickering about puns and technicalities and European band references. Maybe just talk about the match, how about that? Then the referee was distracted. Bailey went to go and get the belt from EO Sky, but Charlotte Flair came out and delivered a particularly bad big boot to EO, allowing Shotzi to hit the Fisherwoman's DDT for the win. Not much good about this besides Shotzi's hairdo. Very good, very punk. Like, like the genre, not like 
CM. We then had our main event as AJ Styles took on Solo Sokoa. This was another solid match, unsurprising given who is involved. Halfway through the match, Paul Heyman came down to ringside, which hopefully foreshadows a Roman versus Styles match in the semi-near future. Solo was in control for a lot of this match. He hit a pop-up Samoan drop, AJ hit an acai moonsault, AJ went for the phenomenal forearm, but Jimmy Uso appeared and swiped his legs out from under him, allowing Solo Sokoa to get the Samoan spike and get the win. Afterwards, well, things didn't really make much sense, now did they? Jimmy gets in the ring and tries to embrace Solo, but Solo's not having it, despite what he said earlier in the show, despite what Jimmy said earlier in the show, and Solo went for the Samoan spike, but Paul Heyman told him not to, leaving Jimmy Uso to raise the ones, I don't know why, before hitting a super kick and a splash on AJ Styles to go off the air. The bloodline storyline just don't make no sense these days. All in all, this was a pretty bang average episode of SmackDown, maybe below average. A lot of solid wrestling, some solid promos. I mean, hey, John Cena's back, that's neat. I wouldn't say anything on this show is really worth going out of your way to see outside of maybe the Miz and LA Knight promo, but it's not like I was sitting there watching this show and getting really excited for payback despite the fact that it was only 24 hours out. I'm gonna give this show a two out of five. And that just about wraps things up for me, but before I go, make sure you check out the latest edition of Survival Series over on Parts Fun Known, where the lads try and name every single AEW champion, and I mean every AEW champion. Give it a watch, I'll be your friend. Until next week, I've been Tempest, and that was wrestling. I said I wanted to want to make silly mistakes. That's a silly mistake. Let's just sit in silence for a while while I think about this. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another exciting edition of Survival Series, the show that teaches me to love wrestling and my friends more than I ever have. Today, I'm joined by the former Survival Series champion, Pete Quinnell. Hi, that's me, former. My middle name now, former. Pete, former Quinnell? Yeah. What's your last name then? Quinnell.